Hello, hello. Welcome to another podcast for Pacific College. I'm here with Dr. Drew Pearson, a very dear friend of mine. I'm thrilled for this interview. I wish we had days, weeks, if not months to explore the many facets of this man that I'm about to interview. Dr. Drew is a neurotherapist, biohacker, and also a fellow DAOM, Doctor of Acupuncture Oriental Medicine. We became even chummier going through the doctoral program together. He was in a cohort ahead of me in the 2010-ish time frame. It feels like forever. But what we're here to talk about uh, are a number of things. First, we're going to talk a little bit about what Drew is going to discuss, present, and share with all of you at the upcoming Pacific Symposium. It is around a technology called PEMF. This is something that um, is so big right now. Tony Robbins just wrote about it in his book, Life Force. Uh, many of the thought leaders have been using this for years. So maybe some of you are just catching up. This is different than infrared. This is different than ultrasound. This is PEMF. And this is Dr. Drew to explain to you a little bit about what is PEMF, how you might bring it into your practice, and then specifically what he's going to talk about at symposium as a morning lecture and an afternoon deep dive. Drew, my friend. All right. Hi. Can you tell us more about PEMF? What is it? Hey. Thanks, Dr. East, for the introduction. Um, PEMF is pulsed electromagnetic fields, basically. What, what we're doing is putting electricity through coils and producing a magnetic field, a, a variable power mag magnetic field, depending on the amount of uh, electricity you're putting through the coil. Now, uh, what I'm going to be doing at symposium this year, um, it's going to be broken up in two parts. The first part's going to be more of the overview of the mechanisms, more of the like the theory, the functions, and, and a brief overview of the benefits, um, how it works, why it works, um, history, right? Uh, how long it's been around, um, things like that. And then the afternoon, we're going to get more into the functional application of you know, if you, you're you putting on gallbladder 34, what does it do? You know, if you're putting on do 20, what frequencies and field effects are you going to have, um, the physiological effects and things like that. And then get into the overall kind of like bigger symptom categories of sleep and inflammation and blood flow and things like that, that it really enhances and how to use it in accordance with acupuncture. And can you use it together? Do you use it apart? Do you use it before or after? And things like that. Um, so it, it's a lot to cover in a very short amount of time, not only today, but during the symposium. And I, I do hope that people will really look into this and explore this. I'm so happy that it's getting traction out there with people like Tony Robbins and, and things like that. Um, I've been using it, gosh, for at least... 15 years, um, where it really, really came about uh, me using it in, in practice, uh, going to the doctorate, we, we had our rounds, right? We, we did geriatrics. And applying acupuncture to a lot of these uh, wonderful older people drained them sometimes if we did too much or left them in too long or something like that. And working with PEMF with it and, and applying these fields to the system enhanced the ability to do acupuncture and heal them much faster. It, it gave them the charge, uh, literally it gave them the charge uh, to process better, better blood flow, better mitochondria function, ATB production, production things like that. And um, it made a world of difference. Um, and we see a lot of people that come in that are very drained. They're, they're not in the condition to take a, a hard course of acupuncture. Um, they have to be spaced out or, or done accordingly to their own physiology. And a lot of people with autoimmune diseases and you know even the post-COVID stuff going on right now. 
people are very weak. And um, I bought a, a bigger system uh, post COVID this year, and it really brought me back. It was one of the few things that um, ramped me back up. I, I felt like I was, I didn't have many symptoms, but I felt like I got hit by a Mack truck afterwards and energetically, right? And it was one of those things where I felt like, you know, just a persistent mono feeling. I couldn't get the oxygen in the blood and, you know, I was monitoring my levels and it was down and things like that. So I, I knew I was compromised in a, a blood flow and oxygenation level. So combining acupuncture and PEMF really brought me back within a week after applying those two things rather quickly. I love that. So what I heard you just say is that PEMF can help acupuncture be more effective or even accessible in extreme deficient situations, like you described with the geriatrics. I know in my research with PEMF and infrared and red light therapies, it boosts the function of the mitochondria. Can you speak just a moment about how PEMF specifically helps or assists or fuels mitochondria? So the fuel is actually going in and providing energy to this mitochondria. Mitochondria is more of the powerhouse for cells, right? And it produces the ATP and, and things like that. And without this energy coming out of the, the mitochondria, it's not providing energy to cells. And if the cells don't have energy, they can't detox, they can't, you, you know, uh, take up the oxygen, take up the nutrients and things like that. Um, so it, it's, it's a huge factor, especially as we age, these mitochondria, when you're a child, you see them bursting with energy, right? That's just mitochondria in action. And as we age, that goes down and we don't move as quickly or as eagerly as these children do. And um, what, what, what the PEMF will do will enhance the function of this mitochondria and enhance the, in, in turn enhance the, the cellular function around it, which makes a huge difference in taking out the garbage basically. We get a lot of buildup and we know this through uh, TCM, right? Um, through all the patterns of stagnation and phlegm and, and these things that we're really good at in acupuncture is the chronic aspects. So this is gonna enhance the acupuncture with ha handling the chronic aspects that uh, emergency medicine really uh, doesn't handle very well. Lymph flow and uh, blood flow, uh, platelet aggregation, things like that it really impacts. Um, when I was doing my capstone, you, you know, a lot of the peripheral blood flow was a, a, a big aspect on the whole system function. So if you're getting good distal blood flow and good capillary fill and the capillary beds in the brain are working well, your circle, circle of Willis is really flowing with blood properly, you're, you're getting that sharpness that that timing in the brain and the flow through the body to make everything function very well. And PEMF really helps get that done system-wide and, and you can do it locally too. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're combining with acupuncture and you're using, let, let's say some blood herbs too, if it's appropriate, like Dan Chen or Chuang Zhang and Sanchi, right? Um, those three really enhance the whole effect. And, and the cool thing about PEMF, it actually makes the nutrients work better. They get absorbed better. Water works better in the body too. It gets absorbed better because a lot of people drink water and just passes right through them because they don't have the right balance and things going on, whether it's the pH or the sodium or the potassium levels. And uh, this really hits that very well. Um, Part of it is, you know, the biological processes for anti-inflammation because when, we're, when we have this chronic inflammation, all the cells start getting inflamed and it cascades through all our organs and things like that. And it holds on to crap. 
and it doesn't let the nutrients come in. It doesn't let the blood flow properly. It doesn't let the cells work properly. All of a sudden you see uh, an aging process start happening much faster and a degradation of function. And that degradation cascades into different symptoms and, and different categories of disease, right? So overall, I, I think the biggest effect um, with this is the anti-inflammation process that I see. I was and, just, and, yeah, I've, go ahead. And it's just so chronic in today's society. We sit so much, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in traffic, uh, whether it's at home. And we're eating processed foods. We're, we're, we're drinking things we shouldn't be drinking. Um, there was a whole, five days ago, there's a huge uh, study that came out uh, about the glyphosates, right? That they cause neuroinflammation. And, you know, we're spraying it across everything in our weeds and, you know, it, it infiltrates us. And then all of a sudden we have it in our system. So these chemicals that we're using every day is leading to that, um, which is a huge issue. Yeah. So what I heard, I'm hearing you say the top benefit you see is in the PEMF, that technology's anti-inflammatory um, response or its ability to reduce inflammation in the body, therefore detoxify the body. Um, and it also boosts the mitochondria. I had a question here for you. What are the top three benefits? I think we covered one. What would be maybe two other major benefits of PEMF? Um, so I think that the, the ones that I, I see most productively, um, blood flow, yep. uh, muscle pain, or just pain overall, yeah, and, and inflammation, and well, all, yeah. uh, they, they all go together, right? Yep. Um, yeah. Inflammation leads to pain. <laughs> Poor blood flow. You know, it's it, it's. You're asking me to pull apart a cake of, of that we just baked and but it all has to work together right yeah um, um so it's go ahead sorry no it, it stimulates the rna and dna it, it stimulates uh, stem cells right it restores the tissue uh you know with with circulations and these mechanisms of uh platelet aggregation and flow and things like that increases oxygen increases atp and, and increases the functioning aspects of the mitochondria makes you healthier um it helps these nutrients activate properly too. And be, because of all the other things it just did with the anti-inflammatory processes and the blood flow and things like that. Um, it, and with the stem cells, it really helps the body's natural capacity to heal. It, the first FDA, I think it was 72. Yeah, 72. Um, when the FDA said, hey, we're, we're going to take this and uh, apply it to bone healing. And they approved it for that. Mm -hmm. And you can heal bones in half the time with this. Half the time. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. Health, healthy bones, not just like, mm -hmm. you know, a whole bunch of spurs running off and causing destruction. Um, so it, it's a big thing. And this came out of, you know, a, a lot of the um, testing that was being done in Japan in the early 1950s or so um but even before that uh like tesla was talking about the effects he, he's the one who kind of created the coils right and in the late 1800s or uh, uh, early 1900s he created these coils and started producing this effect and then we've been working with it ever since slowly but it, it's coming it, it, it's it, it's working quite well so it, I love all of this in summary, um, reduces inflammation, helps the body detoxify, increases mm -hmm. the function of the body overall, stimulates the production of stem cells, that whole kind of uh, chain reaction in the body, improves blood flow. Would you say that PEMF can help de-stress a body? How would it affect stress? Because stress is one of the number one things we all treat in practice. Okay, so um, 
there's a few ways that it can do that. And, and I'll go uh, at it in a way that I would use in, in my own practice. So like I have a big PEMF bed, right? From Pulse, love this thing. And um, you can lay down on the bed. We tend to hold on chronically um, to our stress in our body, right? Our muscles mm -hmm. get tight. Bashe gets tight. We're holding on, you know, waiting for that impact to happen. That's never going to happen because it's just this conceptual aspect of stress that we're feeling, whether it's, uh, you know, a thousand texts that are coming through or a phone call or meetings or, you know, e even even doing a, a, a podcast like this and preparing for, it, you know, it, it adds a, a, a spur of stress in there. And by laying on this bed and, and pulsing the whole body with this, it's relaxing the whole system, not just on like, okay, the skin level or just the micro muscle level. It's going through all the organs and things like that. It's a vagal nerve interaction. It's hitting the whole system. So it's going to really impact that. And then you can use uh, smaller things on, on um, like, uh, you know, something like this, a, a, a smaller PEMF unit on very specific parts of the body or the brain. I'll use it in the brain, most likely uh, in very specific areas at very specific frequencies to affect our salient network in the brain. That, that's our kind of like our resilience network. And once it's applied, all of a sudden, your capacity to handle stress goes way up. And you're using frequencies in the brain that will enhance your ability to just kind of flow and sail through those things without engaging. So you're, you're not a slave to these patterns and habits and neuroendocrine and, and neurological um, aspects in the brain that are creating that constant uh, reaction to our environment basically. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be external environment. It can be the internal environment too. what we think, whether we're criticizing ourselves, what, whether, you know, we're, we're thinking about something incorrectly and applying that and the amygdala starts screaming in fear. And then all of a sudden our prefrontal cortex shuts down and we're in a state of constant stress and we can't think and we can't function and we can't move ahead. This really helps with that. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you kind of now just naturally took yourself to another question I wanted to bring up, and that is PEMF devices come in all shapes and sizes. So I myself have lied on a bed of PEMF and the small handheld devices can be specific. So you can have a device that um, encompasses the whole body, treats the whole body, and then you can have small targeted devices that would work on areas, specific areas, like let's put it on the knees, let's put it on some elbows. But let me ask you this about the bed, because I just recently had an experience with the PEMF bed, the pulse bed, by the way. And what I found was so interesting is, okay, the devices come in all shapes and sizes, and it's not one frequency. So there are settings that are more comfortable and more stress relieving than other settings. So like when you have a device, you set it to a different frequency, a high frequency, a lower frequency. And um, what I found to be most, um, oh gosh, I don't even know, like uh, interesting is that the, the a bed where you're doing PEMF on the whole body, your body will vibrate in the area that needs attention. So you, like, you might say, well, my shoulder hurts, but then your knee starts to vibrate or your hips. And I thought that was fascinating that the body knows, right? The body keeps score. I'm in the middle of that book and reminding myself about that. But the PEMF, it will light up the areas of the body that maybe are deficient or need a little bit more energy. And to me, that was so interesting. Also, everybody's a little different in what setting they prefer. I prefer a higher frequency. So we're going deeper into, you know, we started with what is PMF. Now we're going into a little bit more of how you can really dial in PMF with a uh, higher frequency, lower frequency. So can you speak a little bit about that in terms of how does the body respond in that you'll have PMF over your whole body and then your left shoulder starts to twitch because make no mistake, anybody listening, you feel PMF. 
<laughs> unless it's on a very, very low frequency, which we did on the pulse. I did a wash at the end, which almost made me fall asleep. That's different. But the active PEMF, um, speak a little bit about the different frequencies and how the body reacts. Everybody's body reacts differently. So you bring up a very good point and, and uh, a, a very uh, intrinsic point to what PEMF is. These magnetic fields are all around us all the time and, and we have bad EMF. And, and people are gonna talk about, well, is pulsed EMF the, the same as EMF? And, and the, the answer is yes and no. Uh, y yes, it, it is EMF, but it, it's in a range that's healthy for us rather than uh, a much higher frequency, um, cellular frequencies, 5G and things like that. That, that really hit cells and, and, and cause problems and inflammation. And, you know, you can hold up your phone to your ear and, and watch it turn red because it's heating up a cell. This form of PEMF is not going to heat a cell. Now, frequency wise, so the key to PEMF is the field. Okay. Doesn't matter what frequency, it doesn't. The pulse the rise of the pulse, the, the sharper the pulse that is going up, the higher the strength of impact on a system. So what you're feeling when that's going through, no matter how, how many, how fast the, the drum beat goes, right, is going and signaling that system. Now, the question is, how does it feel for that system it's hitting on you? You know, is it that left shoulder? that's pulsing too fast for you or not pulsing fast enough. And you, you kind of dial that into where it feels comfortable, comfortable for you because you're, you're letting that pulse come up. And so as the pulse comes up, it's gonna sweep through the tissue. And then as it reduces in strength, it's also, also gonna sweep through the tissue too, a much reduced rate, but it's an in and out aspect that it's going through the cells. And, but we find certain cells in the body uh, resonate very well with certain frequencies. Not everyone agrees on this, but I found that not only in the brain, but certain things like nerves, like a two cycles per second, right? Bones are, 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 are more like 75 Hertz. Um, it doesn't mean that any field is not gonna help it. You know, there's a, there's a range of percentage. Um, like uh, IBS, right? I have very specific frequencies for that. And, and, and I can take a, um, just something like this and, and lay it over the, uh, a number of coils and, and lay it over the intestines if I wanna be very gentle, which typically in that situation you do wanna be, um, it will help complete within 10 minutes. It really reduces the uh, IBS going on at the time. Um, capillaries and skin, like 15 hertz. Ligaments, joints, fascia, things like that, more like 10 hertz, 10 cycles per second. Now, 10 hertz, this alpha frequency tends to be the bridge for everything, not only in the brain, but in, in what I'm finding in PEMF too. So, um, even if it's just you have something that's stuck on 10 cycles per second, that's great. Now, most of the systems out there won't let you change frequencies. Uh, the system that you tried with Pulse, only the high-end ones will let you change frequency. Um, I, I have other systems that I can, I have a huge range that I can change. It's not necessary in, in most cases. Um, people get kind of lost in the weeds uh, with frequencies. Um, I've been working with frequencies for 25, 30 years now, and um, you find it secondhand. But don't jump into worrying about how many cycles per second. Get the field effect in and then yeah. go from there. Okay, you brought up something that's a great question. Maybe I'm psychic and I'm reading the minds of people listening. How is PEMF different from electrostimulation or TENS units? Well, TENS units, whether it's uh, 
let's say we're, we're throwing in microcurrent and things like that, that that's providing an electrical current rather than a magnetic field. So a, a current is in and out through a very specific direction. It doesn't do as much of a, a field effect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's say we're working on the anterior deltoid and, and, and you know, throwing in a couple needles there, stimming at 10 hertz, two hertz, whatever. Uh, or, or we're doing that on the back uh, for back uh, tension or pain or even into the um, spine to help alleviate a lot of the disc issues and or neuropathies and things like that. Um, that's a direct stimulus on an electrical frequency that is going from point to point basically. And, and it makes the, you know, muscles fire. Now you can make the muscles fire with um, PEMF too, right? Uh, so the field effect in that sense is similar. What's uh, so interesting though, is like in, with PEMF, not, I had PEMF on a bed, but not all my muscles fired. Only muscles around areas of my body that I know are a little weak. Yeah. And, and that's so bizarre because, because the healthy cells in the body will ignore the magnetic fields. And the disease state tend to take that up because they need more. They need better functioning. They need better flow. How that works, no one knows. I, I mean, you, you go through the literature and go through explanations and things like that. And they have theories, but they don't really know exactly um, how this works. It's kind of like, you know, well, how, how does gravity work? We don't know yet. And, and you know, it, it's, it's wonderful that we can go through this and have this done without, you know, the side effects that you get, you, you know, um, through certain medications or something like that. Absolutely. Or, or, you know, even if you're using lasers, like I'll use lasers and things like that, but you use too much, you cause inflammation. Mm -hmm. And I've not seen that with PEMF. What are the top, like top five, 10, maybe even 15, just off your top of your head, um, conditions that respond really well to PEMF? You said bone break and well, yeah, um, it helps bone heal healing. bones half the time. What else? Pain. You know, whether it's chronic low back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, uh, things like that, um, knee, joint injuries, mm -hmm. whether, you know, you're, you're, you're running a, a marathon like you do, um, you know, knees and ankles and uh, hips and things like that. Um, you know, when I was 20, it, it was OK to run a, a 10 miles now it, it's a it's a whole different story and you know if if i do that or even walk 10 miles then my hips are, are, are screaming at me right and uh putting that on that it helps um any inflammation process edemas are going to be a huge factor um gut issues are a huge thing that it really impacts autoimmune and, what about autoimmune so fibromyalgia, autoimmune, um, it will take out the chronic inflammation. I don't know, and I've not seen any studies um, showing that it actually takes out viral components or something that's causing the autoimmune reaction, whether it's genetic or whether it's a viral or a fungal, deep fungal component in the system. Um, so I don't know, but it can reduce symptoms from an autoimmune like you yeah. said, fibromyalgia it right. can mediate that. Yeah. So like, you know, I, I can tell you what the FDA, you know, is proven indications, you know, non-union fractures, right. Mm. Uh, failed joint fusions, failed spinal fusions. <laughs> it's funny that they, you, you know, the, they'll use this in rescue for all the failed fusions that they're um, doing rather than using this first. Um, Postoperative edema, uh, 
like pain and soft tissue. Um, a big thing since 2008, when that was approved, was major depression with RTMS, right? That's pulse magnetic also. A lot more focal, a, a lot stronger, um, but it can affect depression in people wow. in certain areas of the brain. And, you, you know, it, how I run my practice, I think they miss some major things because a lot of that comes from the gut. Mm -hmm. So if they're not working on the gut too, um, then they're, you know, missing a, a big portion of this. So how, is one treatment the silver bullet or do I need scroll? How is it prescribed? What are the typical protocols for PMF every day, once a week, twice a week? So in a perfect world, you'd be doing it every day. And you, you, the length of time depends on how well you can absorb this and recover. And not recover from the PEMF, but just kind of heal on your own. Because this is going to enhance that ability. Um, I would say two to three times a week is what they typically recommend for, for things. I think that's too little. Um, does it work very well? Absolutely. Uh, but I would rather get someone in once, twice a day and, you know, go through that, that, you know, really good PEMF push and then do a wash afterwards that, that you, and maybe you can explain what you felt with the wash uh, of that and let that uh, inflammation go down, let the swelling go down, let that detox process happen. So during that, obviously you're doing things that will help, you know, take out the uh things that were stored in our body that shouldn't be there anymore mm -hmm. you know what what whether it's activated charcoal or your clay um and and some other herbs that will help uh you know carry the stuff out and through rather than just kind of okay it's outside the cell now what what do we do with it you know how do we get it out mm -hmm. um what about contraindications what are the big no-nos for PEMF? Pacemakers? Pay, pacemaker, you know, any, anything electrical, uh, metal in the body. It tends to go around metal quite well. Um, but it, it, if, if it affects it, it could affect it in a big way. So Credit I, cards. Don't put your credit cards. Well, don't have your credit cards you, in your wallet. It'll yeah. demagnetize your credit cards. One, 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 one to two one to two feet away with um, uh, phones and credit cards and things like Boss. that. Yeah. Um, pregnancy, uh, I haven't seen any, and I've never used it on someone. It doesn't mean it, it, it couldn't be great for that too, um, but it's not an area that I'm yeah. pursuing at this time. Um. I think it could help you get pregnant for anybody that works with fertility. It's going to mitochondrial death, uh, you know, is one of the major reasons of infertility. You know, your advanced maternal age women, their mitochondria are weak. And so they're not producing good eggs. So I think it can help get somebody pregnant. And then again, like you said, I know when I had my PMF, they said, do you have a pacemaker? Are you pregnant? Those are the two contraindications. Do you have an open wound? even though it does stimulate wound healing. Um, and then, you know, please take out your credit cards. Don't have your phone on you on the bed. And interestingly enough, my aura ring. So uh, the guy that put me on my pulse bed said, you might want to take your aura ring off because this is a magnetic field. And it, he said it could um, shorten the battery life of an aura ring. It, it will uh, wipe out fobs, credit cards, things like that. Right, right. Speak, speaking of my aura ring, I have to ask you, because you are the expert, you did your doctoral research on heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I am trying to improve. I No, I'm not trying. I'm committed to improving my very own HRV, which I track with my very own aura ring. So I had my, uh, my PEMF session, and I had an hour-long PMF full body, followed by a wash. I mean, this was the VIP deluxe PMF. And then in the morning, I expected my HRV to be 
perfect. <laughs> um, can PEMF improve HRV heart rate variability? And if yeah, so, but what did I do wrong? But it happens over time. One session is not going to do that. You you need to do it multiple times. I I, I know. Um, in, a, in, in a perfect world, you would be able to do it once and you're done. There you go. Um, but I find, you know, four, six weeks, you, you, you'll see a shift in heart rate variability with that. Um, if you're not doing other things, too. Um, it, and like with women with, with getting pregnant. The aspect of mitochondria is so important. What organ in a woman's body has some of the most dense mitochondria? Are you, are you quizzing me? Mm -hmm. Uterus? Yes. Ovaries? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> reproductive yeah. organs. Reproductive organs. We'll, we'll leave it at that because um, there's slight differences. But you can, when, I don't know if they put the pad on top of you, kind of like a sandwich. Uh, so you have the bed underneath you and a pad on top of you. But everyone that I've worked with that has had any gynecological issues and things like that, it will, they'll feel it directly in their ovaries. They say, oh, I feel it. it's just right there. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's because it's feeding the mitochondria, right? Yeah, yeah. I love that. You asked me what uh, the wash was like. So a good analogy would be a good workout. You know, you warm up, you have a heavy workout, and then you uh, have a cool down or like in yoga, Shavasana. So for me, I had the hour session, the PMF. I mean, my body was moving and shaking and some parts were bouncing. And then when they did the wash, my body just felt really heavy and I just felt really um, sleepy. And um, so that the wash is just kind of like a reintegration is how it was explained to me. It's part of the PMF uh, process. It creates that field. And so I wanted to share on that. Um, and then with the heart rate variability, that's what you did your doctoral research on, which is HRV. So at that time, when I knew you, um, that was, you were really, you know, excited about that. If we want to say geeked out on HRV. But what are you geeking out on these days, Drew? And I know it's awesome stuff. Like what really gets you excited and fired up lately? Um, so, well, I'm doing a, a number of things. One of the biggest things I'm doing right now is uh, working with people to excel their transformation consciously um, and have them affect other people around them and typically CEOs and things like that. So we're working on bigger conceptual aspects of their functioning, whether it's default mode network, salient network, these areas in the brain that help them make better decisions, better wisdom, uh, inceptions in, in their interactions with people, better intuition, uh, better heart-centered leading processes. Um, so that's where I'm really kind of razzed up. And, and how I use the PEMF is much, for, much more for stimulus and, and uh, a, a recovery, so to say, between sessions. So we, we, we train very hard. Uh, we train the brain and, and the body very hard. And then we come back and recover very hard, too. And, and this opens up the ability to do a lot within a short period of time and, and let that cascade into their life consistently. And um, it's, it's a bigger process of keeping them healthy. And, and anyone out there, you know, uh, if you're a practitioner and you're seeing a lot of people, you have to keep your health up too, or else you just collapse. And, and this is one of those things uh, that really helps that it keeps you up. Um, and, and if you're eating a bad diet and not taking care of yourself, you're going to pay in the end. And yeah. with, with anyone, um, that's kind of like the, the base level of, of what I'm working with, but with these, uh, women and men that, that they're are, are really pushing forward, uh, thought leaders, uh, in, in many different, uh, venues out there. Um, we're really pushing forward with them and, and using all these tools to help them accelerate their growth. Um, what, whether 
they want to affect whole industries, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's manufacturing, uh, whether it's uh, energy, whether it's political, um, you have to be in, in tip top shape uh, neurologically and physiologically. Yeah. Neurologically speaking, that's your area of expertise. You've done neurofeedback for so many years. And what just dawned on me, it just occurred to me, probably downloaded if you want to get um, into that terminology is I remember back in 2010, when we were doing our doctoral, you did a neurofeedback session on me where you put me up to on, you know, you, you glued the probes on my head and you did an assessment. You just assessed my brain, my physical Mm -hmm. brain, where it was firing and you reported back what you could see. And it was almost like a, the best psychic reading I've ever received, right? It was not psychic. It was tangible um, from my brain waves. You were able to tell me things about my personality, some things that were obvious and some things that I kept inside. But what just dawned on me and occurred to me is that the transform, you've also gone through a transformation where you were studying brains as a neurotherapist, neuroscientist for all these years, and now you're studying consciousness. I just, I just literally got chills and it just like is this huge aha moment for me, your own transformation in what you're exploring. And then as you explore, you're sharing with all of us. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's imperative these days. Um, as we move forward, we, we see a lot of AI come forward, and th- this is going um, a little bit tangent here, um, artificial intelligence and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, I, I think in the next 12 to, to 15 years, um, as things speed up, we, we don't understand how much that will impact us and how we will be left behind. We, we don't have the evolutionary process right now physiologically to keep up with that. But where we shine is this spiritual consciousness connection. We're able to connect. We're able to go beyond what we thought our physical parameters are. And this is what's opening up for me and what I'm finding opening up for other people and gathering people that have abilities basically to go beyond normal constructs of what we understand. And whether it's quantum or or, or whether it's an aspect of consciousness that that is naturally embedded in ourselves, um, they've been talking about some of this for thousands of years, but it's not a practical thing. And and you can't go and sit, well, you can, but most people don't want to sit 40 years in a cave to hope (laughs) something comes up. Um, And, you you know, well, like my friendship with, with you, right? I, I, w- I would hate the fact that I would be separated and, and you get to a point in meditation where you're, it's no longer hate or separation, we're all connected. Right. But it, the interaction is, is a uh, thrive point in my life, right? Yep, so, so is that how, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna ask you, so you brought up AI, quick question, another tangent, um, Ray Kurzweil, I know you've met a lot of famous people. Have you ever met Ray? And if so, let's talk about it later. <laughs> no, I, I've just, I've, I've seen a talk of his. Um, okay. Uh, interesting, very incredibly interesting individual. Yeah, it, I've read um, a lot of his books and then he's running AI at Google. Yeah. And um, I don't think they're telling us everything that's going on. Of course whether, not. Whether, whether, whether it's Google or DARPA, and I don't want to go to, down a dark. Yeah, we're not. But what you, I, I do want to highlight and, and bring back to the forefront something you just mentioned, which is AI. Some people are threatened by it. Some people are excited and embracing it. But what you just said is that we have a spark in us as human beings, that that spark is what it makes us strong, stronger than AI and would probably be the thing that... Um, we carry forward. That's this uh, higher levels of consciousness, being able to access those um, will be our best defense against any nefarious AI. Would you agree? Yeah. And and that's our only defense, honestly. Yeah. Once once it comes to that point, it'll happen so quick and, and uh, so widespread that we may not know what to do at that point. So everybody start meditating. 
Yeah. Start practicing shamanism. Start come see Drew at um, symposium. You can see him at Recharge, where he's going to be doing some breath work, breath work, meditation. Start doing some of these practices where you're going in and um, uh, reminding yourself of what's inside. Like you just said it. Like the magic is inside of us. That's where they hid it. That's yeah. where it's been hidden all along. We're looking outside. And um, so, um, yeah. And that's, that is something I'm geeking out about. Yeah, that, that's, about that's biohacking, what. about biohacking, but elevating consciousness, raising that level is, um, is my thing too. And, and your big thing is, uh, you know, what I find around you is always cultivation. You're cultivating not only yourself, but everyone around you. And that's affecting the interaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, any practitioner listening to this, Drew said it when he said, make sure you're working on yourself. If each practitioner sees 50 to 100 patients, and let's say 100 practitioners listen to this and they heed the advice and start working on themselves, then that is a hundred practitioners listen to this. They each touch a hundred. That's like 10,000 people have been affected by this podcast alone with the recommendation to go work on yourself, raise your own level of consciousness and vibration. And therefore everything you touch is raised and then ultimately raises the vibration of all things around you and then the planet. Um, wow. Wow. Yep, I brought it here, Drew. Told you I would. I wouldn't just stay on PMF. It was my segue into, into the, the more mystical things that are going on. But I want people to know your depth because I don't think a lot of people do. They can go to www.drdrewpearson.com. Uh, that's D-R-D-R-E-W. So drdrewpearson.com. If you want to get in touch with Drew, come to Symposium. Um, what else do you got going on, Drew? I know that you're busy with whole on in what you talked about your um, intensives uh, with leaders in the mm -hmm. world. But um, what other things do you have on the horizon the next six months to 12 months that you're going to be busy with? No, you it, radical roots, didn't you? You just you guys yeah, just launched so, radical roots. So, so yeah, I, I'm working with Chloe, uh, this, this beautiful, brilliant um person that works with the herbs you know, from Radical Roots, Chloe, is uh, we created Transcend um, together. Well, and these are aspargenic uh, uh, extracts. And I created this to help meditation, right? So it, it really, you, you can feel the ventral and dorsal attention circuits kind of come online and that third eye aspect uh, shift in the, in the, the um, yin tang area, right? And then I have a whole number of formulas coming out with that, what, whether it's um, neurogenesis spe specifically for uh, helping the stem cells. So you take something like that, the, the, the genesis, the neurogen, and, and combine it with PEMF, it's gonna enhance that. It's gonna enhance the stem cells and things like that. Um, then I have a headset coming out, Sensei, S-E-N-S -S dot A-I, because we are using AI in it um, to retrain the brain. So it has sensors and you can use this at home. This um, takes what I've been doing for the last 25 years and cumulates it into something that a consumer can use to retrain their brain, their HRV uh, and their uh, stimulation. So it, it, it works with photobiomodulation and EEG and HRV all together. Um, so that's out this summer, uh, been working on that for a while. Um, got some chocolate coming out. I've had it. It's, uh, the name is chocolate, right? Q -I. Right. But, um, I'm working with a group and we'll, we'll be going national shortly. Um, it's about time, buddy. That stuff is amazing. I love it. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I'm doing so many things and, and um, I've got a book I'm, I'm in the middle of writing right now and just so many things that I'm doing 
that focusing on marketing of chocolate, though I love it, I make it and, you know, use it all the time. Um, I, I don't have the bandwidth for that. Yes. Um, so letting that kind of run with a, a group that can handle it and combine herbs and organic cow, single origin type of things that just kind of enhance your life. I love it. Guys, you got to look out for chocolate. I have had it. It's herbal um, infused chocolate. It's amazing. Drew formulated these over years, years with a chocolatier. You, you worked with a special chocolatier and all, and did all of that. Right. I mean, it was amazing. Boy, I went to school. I, I became a professional <laughs> chocolatier. <laughs> That's what I love about you. You're like me. You're multi-passionate. Yes. Um, and have all of these things going. So guys, I, I have just flooded you with so much uh, information, not just on the PMF, but other things. Follow Dr. Drew. I know, uh, Drew, you've been on other podcasts. I'm sure they can find those just by going on YouTube, even doing Google searches. I listened to one recently that you did that was fabulous with your partner in your other business, um, Come to Symposium. Mm -hmm. Um uh, I have one last question, and then uh, I won't let us go down that rabbit hole. But are there other anything else that you'd want to share? Well, I'm excited about symposium this year. I, I think this is a big factor of us coming out of this uh, pandemic and, and shutdowns and things like that, where where we can really connect again. And I'm looking forward to really uh, seeing people, feeling people again. We've uh, we've been a miss uh, of, of, you know, really connecting. That Zoom is not the same. This is not the same. It never feels the same as sitting person to person, right? You know, when we can sit down and and have a herbal tea or a coffee or, or or some avocado toast or something like that. It's the essence of, of sharing that energy is big. Um, I don't have the capacity yet to kind of span the globe energetically, maybe, maybe in years to come or decades to come. But until then, you know, being in the presence therein um, really shifts people. And I, I'm excited for that, for the symposium this year. Me too. I'm going to be there. I'll be there. We can hang out, uh, pal around, walk around the uh, catamaran. Okay. My last question is PEMF a med bed? What do you mean by a med bed? <laughs> you know, an ET uh, off worlder uh, given to us to heal all of our things. Med bed. So I, I bed? <laughs> the, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is we're getting into uh, levels that we're seeing. Like if we can have a bed, and, and they're coming up with this. It, it has a, what they call a squid type of aspects where they can detect micro magnetic fields in the cells themselves. So we can see disease before it's, fun you know, before it sprouts, basically. We can see that offset of magnetic fields within the cells. So we can provide those fields to properly function. So I, I think we're stepping toward that, absolutely. I love it, prevention. It's kind of like taking thermology, thermography to the next level, to a cellular level being able to detect things and then treat things. Yep, I love it. Okay, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Um, guys, come see us at Symposium. Come see Drew. He's there in the morning. He's got an afternoon deep dive. I'm sure he'll be walking around. And um, find him at drdrewpearson.com. Dr. East, it's been wonderful. Thank you for having me. Um, I think we went over in time. We are perfect in time. We okay. did it. We did it. Okay. All right, buddy. Love you. Great. Right. Love you too. Take care. Bye.